What's really interesting about The Chosen is that this project was actually born out of one of the biggest professional disappointments of my life. My previous film, uh, we had just gotten the news that the box office wasn't going to be what we had hoped. And I was stuck at home on a Friday with my wife at pretty much the lowest point of my career, crying and praying and trying to make sense of it all and trying to figure out what was next. But I'll never forget that God pressed on both of our hearts so clearly and so explicitly the story of the feeding of the 5,000. When Jesus heard from his disciples that the people he was talking to were so hungry, he knew that already. It was as if he had intentionally allowed it to get to this point where the only thing left was a miracle. And then once he multiplied it, he had them go deliver it to all the people. He had them do everything that they could do on their own until the only thing that was left was the thing that only he could do, the miracle. That same night, I was sitting at my computer at 3 o'clock in the morning, a Facebook message pops up, and the message simply said, it didn't even say hi, it just simply said, remember, your job is not to feed the 5,000. Your job is only to provide the loaves and the fish. <laughs> so I said to him, why did you just text me that? And he said, I don't really know, I just felt God leading me to tell you that. <laughs> so a couple months later, um, I decided to make a short film about the birth of Christ from the perspective of the shepherds, and it was just a story that had been on my heart for several years, and it was just intended for our church's Christmas Eve service. My, my friend, who's now my partner in this project, Matthew Faraci, I sent him the short film, and I said, check this out, just let me know what you think, because I think it's special. He watched it and said, do you mind if I show it to some friends of mine who run this company called Bid Angel? He didn't tell me anything about it, he just sent it, and by the end, I was crying, and this flood of exactly like, this can be a pilot. And I didn't even know what the TV series was yet. I just knew Matthew said there was a TV series. I like, this can be a pilot, which afterwards will stick a pitch of Dallas that we can fund a TV show based on this pilot. We'll launch the entire pilot on Facebook. Every step all the way up till launch was all like, just boom, right in my lap. So I, I tell, I say, Neil, did you watch it? I think this is the project that we're going to start Vid Angel Studios with. I think we found our project. And he said, we're not starting Vid Angel Studios on a Bible video. And Jeffrey said, just, just watch it. And so I sat down and I put on my headphones and started to watch this film. And the rest of the office and the rest of the world just disappeared and just felt my heart um, shout for joy. Me, a uh, farm boy from Idaho, um, could see through the eyes of that shepherd and be there for Christ's birth. It was just done in such a fresh and, and new way. And then I pull off my headphones and Jeffrey looked at me and I said, this this is why we made VidAngel. Well, how are we going to convince the guy to do it? <laughs> like, we have never done this before. Just this big concern about how are we going to convince Dallas to work with us? And I just thought, hey man, at this point, I'm just bringing the loaves and fish. So whatever, I, I, I'd gotten to this point where literally my hands were just open and I was just open to whatever. God was going to do. So I said, hey, let's, let's take a crack at it. And he kept saying, I will be impressed if we raise over $800. <laughs> and I'm trying, I've been thinking about, I've got to build a team around Dallas to give him the ability to raise this money because it can't, you know, he's got to, he's got to have the right team. He hasn't done this before and none of, none of us have. And uh, we were just looking around a little laptop and watching the shepherd for the first time. There was the moment where the shepherd was being kicked out of the synagogue. He wanted to learn. He wanted to know about this Messiah. And he was rejected. And what I love is, is what he did next. He noticed someone in need and was able to help them out. And he was able to serve. That water is so symbolic. I just got where this was going. I, I got where the power of this was. 
but I didn't know the depth of how it would affect me. I just knew that everything that I have done in my life up to this point in my business was leading me to this moment. And I, I remember uh, talking to Jeffrey and I says, I don't care what I need to do. If I just need to hold the light, I want to be a part of this. And he laughed. He goes, no, well, we need you to build the audience. We need someone to actually run this. There's an element of this project that isn't about numbers. It's about depth, and it's about another thing that seems, oftentimes feels like impossible math, and that's the impact that it has. And so now when I get a Facebook message from someone who says, um, the eight-year-old daughter of our youth pastor, while she was being baptized, said that what brought her to Christ was watching the pilot episode of The Chosen, and realizing that she was lost and broken like the shepherd was and needed the savior. That's a multiplication of loaves and fish that can't be quantified in numbers. Every single time on a, I'm on a plane or I am on a train or I'm meeting a new stranger, I'm always sharing the gospel with them. And the idea of having a medium that can reach tens of millions of people in a way that I was impacted by the shepherd is not only a humbling, but really, really exciting. If I look at the last 75 years of the messages that have been coming out through the mainstream media, the majority of it is far from edifying. I think the world is waiting for a group of people like the people who are backing the chosen to stand up and do something different and show people a different way to do this. As soon as that is out there and it's done well, it will be received with the same kind of joy that I received that pilot when it was first made. I know a lot of people um, see this as a project, a series that they're able to sit down and, and really enjoy as a family. But what I really see from this is an opportunity to share the good word with the rest of the world. And that why, that's why I'm super passionate about this project. God has done enough already to indicate that he's got a whole lot more to do. All I know is, is that I've brought my loaves and fishes. All I know is, is that the people that I'm working with have brought their loaves and fishes. And all I know is, is that the people who've from around the world who have invested are bringing their loaves and fishes and we're just gonna let God multiply it. Hey, Dallas here, director of The Chosen, the first ever multi-season show about the life of Christ. If you liked what you just saw, please click the like button. Please click the share button. Please follow us on Facebook. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. All these things help make sure that this message and these videos get out to more people. If you didn't like what you just saw, feel free to keep it to yourself. No need to be a chatty Cathy. However, also, if you have not seen the pilot episode to The Chosen, the first ever multi-season show about the life of Christ, Please watch it at thechosen.tv and share that. We want to make sure that this show has the opportunity to impact the world.